In this video, we will talk about splenectomy. First of all, the indications of splenectomy. The most important indication is trauma. It can be the result of any accident or in, as a part of any operative procedure as in the mobilization of esophagus, stomach, pancreas or splenic flexure of colon, you can accidentally damage spleen and that can lead to splenectomy. In oncological procedures, as a part of end block resection, as in radical gastrectomy or in pancreatectomy, uh, in diagnostic procedures, in therapeutic procedures, it can be indicated in hematological diseases as in stereocytosis to reduce anemia, thrombocytopenia, uh, in ITP, in hypersplenism. It can be indicated in portal hypertension in association with shunt or variceal surgery. For preoperative preparation of patient after consent, we will go for baseline investigations, CBC, clotting profile, LFTs, RFTs, serum electrolyte. Clotting profile is important to know the bleeding tendency of patient so that we can arrange platelets for the patient as it can be required during surgery or in early postoperative period. Blood arrangement is very important according to the bleeding tendency of patient. It can be in the form of fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate or platelets. Prophylactic antibiotic cover is important for the prevention of post-operative sepsis. Heading towards splenectomy, there are two basic techniques of splenectomy, open splenectomy and laparoscopic splenectomy. In open splenectomy, first of all, we will give incision. There are three basic types of incision for this procedure. Midline incision, left transverse incision, thoracoabdominal incision. Thoracoabdominal incision is usually used for a large size of spleen, which is adherent to diaphragm. After dissecting the abdominal wall, we will go for uh, dissection of gastrosplenic ligament. We will open it and ligate the short gastric vessels at the superior border of pancreas. Then we will expose the posterior surface of spleen and dissect lino renal ligament. Then we will rotate the spleen medially and separate hilar vessels from pancreas and ligate them. Then, then we will take the spleen out. If hemostasis is cured, you don't need to place any drain. For uh, splenic vessels uh, bleed, you can use metallic clips or topical hemostatic agents as fibrin pad. In laparoscopic splenectomy, we will place the patient on right side to expose the area between left costal margin and left eyelid fossa. Then we will insert the ports. A 10 mm port is inserted 1 cm from costal margin at mid clavicular line. A 12 mm port is inserted 1 cm from costal margin at posterior axillary line. Then a 5 mm port is inserted near xiphoid process. Then the abdomen is insufflated with gases. Next we will dissect spleno-colic ligament to free the lower pole of spleen and splenopharynic ligament to free spleen from diaphragm and the other attachments of spleen to abdomen are dissected. Then we will go for the dissection of gastrosplenic ligament that contains gastric vessels and ligate these gastric vessels. In next step, we will dissect and ligate the splenic artery and splenic vein in splenic hilum. After all this dissection, we will go for bagging and removal of spleen. A self-retaining opening bag is introduced through the incision of open laparoscopy after removal of 12 mm board. The spleen is placed in the bag and is pulled out through the abdominal opening. A hand-assisted procedure can be used if spleen is grossly enlarged. Heading towards the post-splenectomy complications. In immediate complications, 
hemorrhage can occur due to slippage of ligature hematemesis can occur due to gastric mucosa damage left basal atelectasis is common left pleural effusion is common iatrogenic injuries to adjacent organs can occur uh, and that can lead to gastric fistula pancreatitis or pancreatic fistula in long run splenectomy can lead to post operative thrombocytosis as spleen plays an important role in the production of anti platelet antibodies that help in clearance of platelets it is at peak 1 to 3 weeks after surgery it is usually self limiting but if platelet count increases more than 10 lakh per ml then you need to start aspirin prophylaxis as it can lead to dvt or pulmonary embolism in post uh, operative long term complications post splenectomy septicemia is very important and the in, uh, the organisms involved in post splenectomy septicemia are encapsulated bacteria pneumococcus meningococcus h influenza type b e coli uh, spleen plays important role in the production of opsonins these are proteins that uh, cause the production of pores in cell wall of bacteria and allow wbcs to enter the bacteria to kill them now we will talk about opportunistic post splenectomy sepsis it is most important uh, post splenectomy complication as it can lead to the death of patient it can range from uh, short prodrome with non specific symptoms to dic shock and death patient can present with fever and chills or upper respiratory tract infection or gi tract involvement with signs of meningitis or pneumonia or dic coagulopathy uh, so the prevention of opportunistic post splenectomy sepsis can be done by four basic steps vaccination prophylactic antibiotics education of the patient and prompt treat treatment post splenectomy vaccination for elective splenectomy you have to vaccinate the patient two weeks prior to surgery but if you are going to operate the patient in emergency then you can give vaccine after two weeks of surgery or prior to the discharge of patient we need to vaccinate the patient against pneumococcus meningococcus h influenza type b and influenza virus for pneumococcus you have to repeat the vaccine every 5 years for meningococcus uh, men acwy vaccine you will give first two doses 8 weeks apart and men b you will give first two doses 4 weeks apart and then you will repeat these vaccines after every 5 years for h influenza type b you have to repeat this vaccine after every 10 10 year influenza virus vaccine is important as uh, influenza can cause post viral uh, secondary bacterial infection that can be lethal for post splenectomy patient although the prophylactic antibiotics um the role of prophylactic antibiotics is controversial uh, but uh, we usually give daily dose of penicillin v125 mg pd or amoxicillin 20 mg per kg per day until the age of 10 years for the children under 5 years of age in older children we give daily dose of penicillin v250 mg pd or amoxicillin 250 mg pd until the age of 16 years for adults we usually give penicillin v 500 mg bd or amoxicillin 500 mg od uh, in the patients with resistance we go for erythromycin 250 mg bd or chloramphenicol um, we can use iv antibiotics in hospital uh, the most important thing is the patients are at higher risk risk of opportunistic post splenectomy sepsis 
after two to three years of splenectomy so antibiotic dose should be maximum after two to three years of splenectomy we also need to educate our patients regarding animal handling uh, because uh, capnocytophaga carnivorous is the organism that causes post-splenectomy sepsis uh, is present in the oral cavity of dog, cat or other animal bites. So uh, we need to tell our patients that they should not handle these animals. Thanks for watching.